This game has a lover's emote tab. One of the icons is a girl stepping on a guy's head with the flavor text, are you ready to be trampled by the queen? How do you like it? What the actual hell is this game? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Drivehays and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMO games I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff, ring the bell for all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to the Patreons and Twitch subs. I am still determined to list every Patreon supporter on one slide, more on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we are playing Lucent Heart, a cutesy anime style MMO released back in the early 2010s and because of this it looks, sounds and plays exactly like every other cutesy anime style MMO released back in the early 2010s. I swear the MMO genre had a copy paste bunch of game code developers just shared around. I wonder who actually did make this and oh look it's our old friend Suba Games who also worked on Dream of Mirror Online and Luna Online Reborn, two other games I've played on this series so I guess we know what we're in for. The Steam trailer even has that forgettable Euro techno music playing, oh this is just going to be paint by numbers the anime MMO. Client launches and it needs to update, that's fine, but the update says need 1, need 5, need 2, need 13, need 20, need 7. Developers, alright, honest question here, and I genuinely mean this. When you've got so much screen space left to use, why do you insist on cramming all of this information into such a small overflowing space? Why is this a hallmark of crap Eastern MMOs? If you need more room to display your stuff, just use more room, you've got the room. Finally, the game is ready to launch, so we go to play it, and it crashes! Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic start. Top notch, 5 out of 7, game of the year, every year. Look, real talk, if I sound annoyed and sick of these generic anime buggy cash shop pushing MMOs, it's because I am, so that's how it comes across. Character creation. Again, the hairstyles and face shapes have no numbers or names or identifiers, so you can endlessly cycle through them, unaware if there are 5 or 10 or 15. You just have to memorise what they all look like and then stop when you are fulfilled. Game starts. WASD movement. Spacebar does nothing. Because why would the biggest keyboard button do anything? And you can left click to move. Why, game? Why have you crammed all of your icons up against the edge of the screen and then had to use the smallest text ever to fit? Just make your icons bigger. Use the spacebar. If you made the UI for this game, I want you to sit down and seriously think about what you've done. Like, why is there a line of text scrolling across the top of the screen advertising the winner of a house party at me? I've literally logged in, do you think I care? The character stat screen is basic but functional. Strength, dexterity, all the usual. Although I do like how air defense is the top defensive stat. Like, not magical air defense, just air defense. Like I'm carrying around a surface-to-air missile in my back pocket just in case. What do you think happens when you open your inventory? That's right, it asks you for your secondary password. Despite being in the game, despite having already logged into the game, your inventory will not open until you enter your secondary password again. This is the dumbest security feature ever. These anime MMO games are usually just platforms for stupid emotes, so let's explore the emote tab first. Oh, there's a dance emote, cool. Actually, there are three boys only. Ooh, gender-locked dance emotes. I mean, why? Your character models are basically identical. They're about 30 polygons each. It's not like you'd struggle to transfer these to a female model. You've not got to rewrite that much code. I use the sit emote, which summons a bench. Wait, what? I'm a bench man, sir? Game, you should open with this. I would play the crap out of an MMO where I beat my enemies to death by summoning benches. Missed opportunity game, right there. And now it gets creepy. There are three tabs of emotes. Command, which opens menus and stuff. Social, which are the dances and responses like waving and summoning benches. And then the lovers tab, which features emotes like holding hands, cheek kissing, lip kissing, French kissing, a tent get a room icon, which is only usable by spouses once you've married someone in the game. And one icon of a woman standing on a man's head with the caption trampled by the queen how do you like it? Luna Reborn Online had a date dungeon. This has a full-on BDSM emote. Super Games, what are you? I thought you were making kid-friendly crap MMOs. Turns out you make kink-friendly anime wish-fulfillment MMOs. Who knew? Maybe that's a market. 
I run up these stairs, talk to Adam and then instantly level up. I have done literally nothing other than summon a bench and not get stepped on by the Queen, but hey, now I'm level 2. And then I go and explore the town, and I discover, against everything that is logical or holy, this game has players standing proudly in the central square as an affront to everything we hold dear in game design, the player base of Lucent Heart. It is disappointing though to see none of them have summoned benches or are currently being stepped on. Ah yes, the traditional overly designed sci-fi flying mount with cutesy blob minions jumping around, can't forget those can we? As I'm walking up these steps, some purple flames spawn by my feet and the sound effects just roar into life. Have a listen. Who does the sound for these games? Is it the same guy? Do all the crappy anime MMOs just share one overworked, underpaid sound designer? Pressing Q opens the quest list, and this is functionally the same as Lunar Online Reborn. All the info is there, who gave you a quest, who wants the quest, what you need to do, and where to find it. This is actually a fine little quest list. It's still a bit cramped and small and seemingly forcing itself to cram all the info into a tiny window, but functionally, this works. Oh, there's a Find NPC button under my quest. I wonder what this does. And oh, great, it's an auto-run feature. Brilliant, I don't even need to play the game. I can just auto-run from place to place. Because designing an interesting and unique city layout with its own cultural backstory and architectural quirks for players to get lost in is for losers. Just slam some paths and steps down, have a load of empty, expansive areas, and let auto-run do its thing. Chat to Grant and pick Become a Warrior or a Mage as a quest. You need to accept the quest for either one, and the game tells you if you change your mind before you finish the quest, you've got to drop the quest, choose again, and pick differently. Wow, what a brilliantly intuitive system. I can think of no way at all this could have been done better. Such as having a big button that says, would you like to be a warrior or a mage at the start of the game? I go for Warrior and all of my new items auto-equip. Oh, thank God. You know what I hate? All that pesky RPG nonsense of reading my equipment and building a gear setup and knowing my stats. Thank God that's been dealt with. Just stick stuff on me. I don't care about numbers. Oh, hang on. The Warrior Tutor has a gun. Just a straight-up rifle. I am glad I chose Warrior now. Who needs magic when you have the power of gun? And here we find the music line. Just listen as I walk back and forth over this exact spot and the grinding ambience of the gears kicks in and then instantly cuts out. There is no distance-based music fade, no gentle fade in or fade out. It's just instant and jarring. Music, no music. Small touches, game. Small touches that we notice and it makes you look amateur. To change areas, you need to walk onto this teleportation pad, except you don't. It's just an area divide and you can run past it fine. And now we're in the wild, ready for combat. So I speak to some more NPCs, because they're probably going to give me kill X quest, and they do, and now combat begins. Behold. You don't start with any abilities, or at least that's what I thought, but no, you do, it's just a very strange system which we will look at in a moment. First of all, the music. It just stops, and then starts again, after a full minute of silence. I checked the options menu, thinking maybe there's a loop choice, but no, it's just like this. Oh, let's increase the view distance and see how far my graphics can push this game. Wow. Oh wow, yeah, that's much better. God, the difference is staggering. You know what's crazy? That doesn't actually increase or decrease the view distance, because I can still see the land. It just darkens the distant landmass a little bit. It's still loading everything in, it's just a little bit more fog. Okay, so back to the combat, this is how abilities work. You have emotion points, shown in the top left, and when you land an attack, you build up happy emotion, and missing an attack, or being on low health, builds up negative emotion. And then you'll see you've got four icons of faces to the top left, which are again repeated in the skills bar to the bottom right. They are your special attacks. The happy ones restore your HP or MP, and the sad ones boost your movement speed so you can run away. And no, I'm not joking. They are your starting abilities. But it won't matter how happy or sad you get, because you're not given any early game potions or damage mitigation, and if you attack three or four enemies in a row, like you have to in the first quest, you die. 
You die on the first quest, and when you die, the game forcefully applies the invert colour filter over your entire screen, so if you were playing this in a dark room, RIP your eyeballs. As you can see, I followed the traditional death ritual of being buggered by a plant while clipping my entire top half under the ground. You can return to the city or choose Revive. What do you think choosing Revive does? That's right, it opens the shop. Reviving needs cash shop premium items and it wastes no time pushing them on you. I think I'll respawn in the city and admire the cash shop later. When you respawn in the city, your health remains low and the regen rate is extremely low and ah, oh, you know it's going to be one of those buy potions and chug them game. I've also noticed that every now and again, after a few seconds of silence, a super loud waterfall sound effect will play. Have a listen, I've not altered this audio at all. So let's have a look at the cash shop, shall we? Well, it's probably the only thing laid out relatively competently. I'm not saying it's good, but it's serviceable. Look, an item called Rudolph's Red Nose. Oh, let's click on the details button and get some more details on it. Item, Rudolph's Red Nose. Wow, thanks details button. That was definitely a worthwhile amount of extra information. I feel fulfilled. So you can try on some of the excessive cash shop cosmetics and then click on these little arrows to spin your avatar, but the spinning stops randomly. This is what's happening, right? I'm clicking and holding on an arrow. It starts to spin and then just stops. I'm still holding the click. You can actually see the moment I release the left click because the arrow icon changes colours because it's registered a cursor floating over it, not clicked. So I click and hold again, and it spins and randomly stops. Again, what on earth is this? How difficult is this to make? This is your shop. This is where you encourage people to spend money. This is the one part of the game I would expect to work flawlessly. But no, you can't even do this right. You also cannot try on or see mounts, so I hope you like guessing. One of the tabs is even called Gachapon. You know those casual games where you might get something good or something bad? This game makes no attempts to hide how cash shop driven it is. So let's get back to questing. You know, it's a real shame I have to do this alone. I wonder what the community tab could do to help me find part of the community. Well, there's a friends list and another tab, a Cupid tab. And the tooltip says you can use this tool to find others and get to know or date each other. It's not even being subtle. This is just a dating simulator. This is just plenty of fish for people who like crap MMOs. So I do some quests, meet Hermes, famous of course for doing backflips and wearing darker eyeliner than Batman and he wants some wolves killed because he annoyed Ares and this will apparently solve it. I'm not joking, that's the plot. So we've got ancient gods involved now too. I say hi to some other players and they ignore me. Maybe they're too busy PMing each other sweet nothings enjoying the Cupid tab. Maybe if that dude plays his cards right he'll get the step on me emote later. Oh I hope so. Godspeed young man. Godspeed. I get my first healing item, white toast. The tooltip says some nutritious white toast, which I have to disagree with. White bread is one of the least nutritious things you can eat, but it will sustain me while I slaughter the mutated pea pods, ripping out their pea innards for the glory of the land. And trust me, I made that quest sound way more fun than it actually is. You basically kill five pea pods. Hand in the quest and get the traditional early game quest reward of absolutely nothing. Then the music cuts out again and I go and kill some wolves. I've played many bad MMOs. I've made it my entire job. I even played some crap anime MMOs recently, so I want you to understand my full meaning when I say this is crap. Everything about this is dull. There's no saving grace here. The menus, the UI, the quests, the combat, the inventory, the music, the sound effects, the auto run. Everything about this experience so far is boring as hell. I get that years ago, back in the early 2010s, the internet was a wild and chaotic place. This might have had an audience then. Low spec computers, anime fans. I was going to say young kids, but with the emotes it has, no. Younger kids, definitely not. But now, the only people still playing games like these are either addicted or heavily invested. People are now playing because the sunk cost fallacy is holding them down or they are nostalgic for this game. No one is sat there thinking, oh boy, I can't wait to get into the MMORPG world. I I've never played an MMO before. What should I play first? I mean, 
Someone did mention that the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV has a free trial and includes the entirety of A Realm Reborn and the award-winning Heavensward expansion, up to level 60 with no restrictions on playtime. No, I'll just play Lucent Heart. Hashtag not sponsored by Final Fantasy XIV, I just think it's a fantastic game and you should join me on Omega. You know what perfectly captures this game? This moment right here, when the music cuts out while I was auto-running to another quest but the crickets keep chirping. This is Lucent Heart. What is it with MMOs designing massive expansive cities and then filling them with nothing? I know negative space is a design concept, but that usually means creating something out of the space you don't use, not leaving a massive empty space itself. They're so expansive and they're so empty, I honestly feel they could improve cities in crap anime games by just bringing things closer helping the cities feel less empty, more realistic and believable. The auto-run feature takes me into the guild hall, and what are your elite knights wearing? What even is this armour? These are your defenders of the citadel. Cover them up, even the NPC looks annoyed. This dude tells me he recommends getting a warehouse. Oh yeah, sure, I'll just pop over to the local warehouse emporium and pick one up, shall I? Oh, you actually do do that. That was a joke, but that's a thing that happens. And why is the warehouse run by P.T. Barnum? Was this one of your million dreams to sell warehouses in a crap MMO? While running to a quest, I check the emote tab again because there is no way I got it right earlier, but no, I did. There are four types of kiss emote. Cheek kiss, lip kiss, French kiss, and passionate kiss which actually applies a passive buff and increases your happiness constantly for 30 minutes. But the happy emotion is used for combat, so hang on. The meta tactic in this game is to passionately make out with someone before charging into battle. What the actual hell, designers? I fight some wolves and they wreck me, so I run away using the power of flee, and eventually I gather all I need from them and I hand in the warehouse quest, and next up, Quincy needs some supplies gathering to teach me about crafting. Which means I return to the wolves, again, that's the third time, in three quests. You have made me return to the same group of enemies three times in a row and kill the same amount. That is excessive, and no one's even stepped on my head yet. I can't believe you would do that game, teasing an emote like that and not even having an NPC demonstrate it. That's just evil. Guess how crafting works. Did you say you can only choose to specialise in one skill and then you just combine items with other items in a certain place to make better items? Then yeah, you're pretty much spot on. So I choose blacksmithing and the first item it tries to sell me is glass. Yes, glass, the old famous blacksmithing material. Many is the time I've wandered into the red hot blacksmith's forge and watched as they forged a glass blade or made a glass pommel or tempered plate armour by smashing it against some shards of glass. Did you even research? what blacksmithing was. When I play these games for this series, I keep detailed notes. I played for another 30 minutes, bringing my total playtime up to about 5 hours, and the only note I made in this time was, I'm bored, this is crap. Look, I get it. Many years ago, someone probably asked the question, how many low-budget, low-resolution anime MMOs does the world need? And they attempted to answer this question by just pumping out a load of them, all focusing on different levels of fetish. All of them hiding some depraved desire wish fulfillment thing under the veneer of child-friendly online adventure game. And all of them using the same terrible sound guy and the same cramped UI design. And all of them, for the most part, are crap. If you played these types of games as a kid and you enjoyed them, that's fine. I enjoyed the first Power Rangers movie when I was young and I thought the Rasmus were the pinnacle of dark emotional rock. Decisions we made as kids are often bad, so don't feel bad for enjoying it back then. Just realise that now, in today's modern MMORPG landscape, with the new design skills we've got, these games are awful. So to end the review, I will award Lucent Heart didn't even step on my head out of 10. Thank you for watching. Massive thanks again to the Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who keep the channel going. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord and our subreddit. And as always, have a great day.